Hi, Mr. Richards here. Today's lesson is on graphing in the four quadrants. We're going to label the coordinate plane with the terms ordered pair, origin, x-axis, x-coordinate, y-axis, and y-coordinate. Well, let's start with the left. This arrow is pointing at this axis, which is our y-axis. This arrow is pointing here where the two axes meet, and that is known as the origin. This arrow is pointing at this horizontal axis, which is our x-axis. Moving to the top right, this is pointing to the 1. Well, the 1 represents our x coordinate, in the middle, this is pointing to this whole thing, which is known as a ordered pair, and lastly, this is pointing to the 2, which is the y coordinate. So now that we have our vocabulary, we can continue on. In example one, we're going to name the ordered pair for each point graphed at the right. So we have example 1a being P. Now remember, ordered pairs are always written parentheses, your x-coordinate, comma, your y-coordinate. And so when we look down here at P, the x-coordinate is 4, comma, our y-coordinate is negative 2. So 4, comma, negative 2 is our ordered pair. Make sure we use the parentheses as well. What about Q? Well, the first part is our x-coordinate, and that's going to be here at negative 3. Next, we have our y-coordinate, which is negative 1. So negative 3, negative 1 is our ordered pair for q. Next, graph and label each point on a coordinate plane. Name the quadrant in which each point is graphed. Well, when you think quad, quad is four, like quadrilateral is a four-sided shape. And so we have four quadrants in a coordinate plane. Quadrant one is here, two, three, four. And a good way of knowing this, quadrant one always starts in the top right where everything's positive, And then we go counterclockwise, two, three, four. And yes, I would like us to know the Roman numerals. So, we have, in example two, order pairs that spell out math. So, negative one, negative five. Negative one on the x is here. Negative five on the y is there. And so, where they meet is right here. That is our m. And that's at negative 1, negative 5. And the quadrant is the third quadrant. What about a? Negative 2, 3. Well, negative 2 is here. 3 is there. And where they meet is right here at negative 2, 3. That is our point a. Now, that is in quadrant 2. 3, negative 1. Well, 3 is here. Negative 1 there, and where they meet is there. So, 3, negative 1 is here, and that is T, which is quadrant 4. What about 0, negative 2? Well, that is... 0 is here. We didn't go anywhere on our x-axis, but we go down 
to negative 2, which is right there, and that's our h. And so name the quadrant in which point is graphed. Well, technically, the quadrant is none. However, sometimes I do see this written if it is none for the quadrant, that you write the axis the point is graphed on. This is graphed on the y axis. So technically our answer is none, but you may come across a time when the question asks you to name the quadrant or axis the point is graphed on. Well, the or axis part here would be the y axis. Miss Tura's class is playing a classroom quiz game. The difference between Allie's and Joachim's score is three points. If X represents Allie's score and Y represents Joachim's score, make a table of possible values for X and Y, then graph the ordered pairs and describe the graph. Let's see if we can write this into an equation first. We have Allie minus Joachim. That difference, according to our question, is three points. Allie is represented by X in our question. Joachim by y, so x minus y is going to equal 3. Now if we were to try to make a table of values for x and y, we can just pick numbers to put in for x. So I'm going to start by putting in a 3, then a 2, then a 1, then 0, negative 1, negative 2, and lastly, negative 3. Well, let's put in a 3 for x. 3 minus something for y needs to equal 3. Well, there's only one thing I can think of, and that is 0. 3 minus 0 is equal to 3. What about our next one? 2 minus what is going to be equal to 3? Well, 2 minus 1 is 1. That doesn't work. 2 minus 0 is 2. That's getting better. So this one's actually kind of strange. 2 minus a negative 1 is equal to 3. So negative 1 is our solution here. What about the next one? 1 minus what is equal to 3? Well, my guess is it's going to have to be a negative number again. And 1 minus negative 2 is equal to 3. Remember, keep change opposite. 1 plus 2 is equal to 3. So negative 2 is our answer here. 0 minus what is equal to 3? Well, that solution is negative 3. And continuing down, maybe you can see the pattern now. Negative 1 minus what is equal to 3? Well, negative 4. Negative 2 minus what is equal to 3? How about negative 5? And lastly, negative 3 minus what is equal to 3? Well, negative 6. And so now we can take that table of values and attempt to graph it. The first ordered pair we can draw is at 3, 0, which is here, then 2, negative 1, 1, negative 2, 0, negative 3, negative 1, negative 4, negative 2, negative 5, and negative 3, negative 6 would be right around here, but we don't have room on our graph for it, so we can stop there. That's our graph. Now, describe the graph. It looks to me like we formed a line. So what we can write is the points on the graph
are in a line. Then let's make a note of where it crosses the y-axis and where it crosses the x-axis. So the line crosses We'll start with the x, the x-axis, at what well, crosses the x-axis here at this point, and that point was our 3, 0. So we can say at either 3, 0 or just x equals 3, and then the y-axis at, well, it crosses the y-axis here, which is at 0, negative 3, and so we can say at y equals negative 3. And that is it for this example, and that is it for this lesson on graphing in the four quadrants. Good luck!